Hi there Firebirds fans and welcome to the very first episode of The Fireplace, your complete analysis show of all things Firebirds brought to you by Suncorp. I'm Tom Mitchell and this is Claire McMenamin here and we will bring to you everything that you need to know week in and week out. But Claire, what an opening week of the Suncorp Super Netball. We had it all, records tumbled, the defending champs were defeated and there were a couple of those one goal thrillers. Unfortunately for the Firebirds, one of those games was that we went down to the Swifts 54-53, but you took out some positives from the game. Oh, I did and you know, a heartbreaking loss for the Firebirds and Firebirds fans just generally, but what a cracker of a first quarter. The girls came out and were absolutely dominant in that first 30 minutes of netball. They came out of all of their stoppages really nicely. I think we started to see glimpses of the greatness that our attack end can put together with Mahalia Cassidy now in the fold. And the defensive end, wowza, I just think it's a new era of a defensive end for Queensland. You know, we've only got that one player back from last year in Gabby Simpson, the captain. We had two Suncorp Super Netball debutants. It sounds weird calling Geitzy that, but Tara and Geitzy to anchor us behind. And Mahalia was really unassuming with her defensive effort. She just worked and worked and worked. So there was some great work in that first 30. Now, the birdies were up by as many as eight goals at one stage, only to go on and lose it, unfortunately. Where did, where did you think you saw that momentum shift in the second half? Yeah, and I mean, Rosalie probably walked away from that game and said to the girls, it was yours for the taking. And it was definitely that last 15, that fourth quarter where things started to unfold. The third quarter, they only lost by one goal. So we definitely were still in the mix there, but things were starting to come a little bit unstuck. But when the pressure came on, the Swifts crowd came into play. They really were that eighth player on court for the Swifts. Things just didn't really evolve the way I don't think that the girls would have planned. Um, and Sophie Garvin came on and had immediate impact for the Swifts. I mean, she scored 18 from 19 goals in, you know, less than a, a half of netball. So it's pretty significant. And, and once they got their momentum, we just really couldn't pin them down and stop it. Now, our attack, you see some room for improvement there? Oh, definitely. I think that there is a lot of things to take. The key thing, though, that I'd like to see going into this weekend is I want Gretel Tippett to be putting up more shots. She only went to the went to the post 11 times. She scored eight times off that. But I think what makes Gret so deadly is the fact that she can be a long range shooter. We probably didn't engage our mid court as much as what we would have. I think Katie would probably be a bit disappointed with the influence and role that she had in terms of goal assists and feeds into the circle. Gretel did a lion's share of the feeding out the front. So I think if Mahalia and, and um, Katie and Gemma as well, if she gets that opportunity, can take more onus in terms of delivering the ball into the circle. And then just backing backing our goalers and Gretz backing herself, Diddy backing Gretz as well to just go to the post because we know when she puts them up, when she's got that confidence, she just nails it every time. And if she doesn't, Romelda's there to get to the rebound. So <laughs> it's pretty good. Now your speciality, defence, how good was it to see Geitze back in the purple dress? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, we saw her at the Com Games in the green and gold, but wearing purple, please. I'm a sucker for girls in purple and having Geitze back is just amazingly good. I think that they had a great first half, but in the second half, there would needed to be more variety. For anyone that watched the footage on the weekend, Laura spoke about the fact that half time that they needed to have some more variety. And I think that when Claire O'Brien was dominating off the centre pass and we were doing a wall, we were shutting down first phase, but we weren't, we weren't covering second phase. So more effort to be pushing those players high and wide and having a little bit more cohesion. I think the girls probably would reflect and think that they were a bit disconnected. So making that effort to come back together and ensure that they've got that unit pressure so that they're suffocating and getting tips, touches, deflections, and then chasing those up to have them turn into our goals converting. And that brings us to our Suncorp Team Girls moment of the week. So also making her Suncorp Super Netball debut on the weekend was Tara Hinchliffe. How good was it seeing Tara out there? She actually grew up idolising Geitze, a very special moment for her. Oh, and it wasn't just special in terms of that day. It was special because the night before, Laura presented Tara with her first Firebirds dress. And the thing about Tara is that she is just so unassuming. She is just this quietly determined young lady and is achieving amazing things. In the past 12 months alone, her confidence has just soared. She represented Australia at the Under-21 World Championships in Botswana and she did not look out of place on court on the weekend.
weekend at all. What I love about Tazi though is what she contributes to the team. So this is a girl who, when I went to training at the start of the year, was able to tell Gaitsu to just settle down in a, in a head explosion moment. With such composure and leadership, she brings a beautiful, dry, sarcastic wit to the team. And I love her because she's got diversity, not just on court. She's a smart player, but she's studying away from the court. She has beautiful relationships with her friends. She has a twinch lift. Maddie, her sister, also plays netball. And so this is a girl that plays netball because of the relationship she forms because of what it gives her on and off the court and what it gives her to her overall personality and she's exciting. I can't wait to see how things unfold. If that's what we saw from Laura and Tara just you know in a snippet you know, under pressure situations on the weekend then I just think look out Firebirds fans in the next few rounds because I think she's going to be sensational. I cannot wait. Just looking ahead quickly to this weekend round two. It's our very first home game of the season up against our Queensland rivals the Sunshine Coast Lightning. Claire neither side will be wanting to start the season 0-2 oh will they? Oh no way and Lightning is especially back to back, they're trying to go back to back and defend that premiership. So if there's a time for that, that opportunity for us to pounce, for the Firebirds to go out there and absolutely just smash it, this is it. So it's going to be a cracker. And if you can't get out to the entertainment centre on the weekend, I would encourage all netball fans and lovers alike, turn on your television. Channel 9, 1pm on Sunday. It is free to air. It's live. And if you're not at home, you've got no excuse. Download the 9 Now app onto your smartphone and you can watch all of the action live and hopefully Team Mitch, fingers crossed, we can see a Firebirds victory. We can take hopefully eight points. Eight premiership points would be beautiful. I love where your head's at, Claire. Thank you so much. Great advice there for Sunday afternoon's game. Well, that's it for round one, the episode one of the Fireplace. Join us next weekend. Be sure to tune in every week for all things Firebirds here on the Fireplace.